wonderful Christmas carols, some fun uh, stories, and just all around Christmas cheer. We both have a lovely Christmas coffee. I hope you will join us in a libation or something tasty. I have a dog on my lap. Mm -hmm. Zeus is here to uh, supervise, make sure we stay in line. So let's get this started, shall we? Tonight I'm reading The Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg. On Christmas Eve many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear. The ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with ch other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced forward. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through dark, cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed the barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the Outside, we saw hundreds of elves. As our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no farther, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We peered through the crowd, pressed through the crowd, I'm so sorry, to the edge of a large, large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound like nothing I'd ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly.
he marched over to us and pointed to me and said, Let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, Now, what would you like for Christmas? I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Jan Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out, the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled above us once, then disappeared into the cold, dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said but the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister, sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yes, my father, it's broken. When I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all who truly believe.
And that, my friends, was The Polar Express, again by Chris Van Allsburg. The next selection I chose Our next selection is from a book of my mother's called A Christmas Garland. This is A Visit from St. Nicholas, written by Clement C. Moore. And Zeus approves. Mm -hmm. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds with visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. 
as dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky. So up to the housetop his coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up, up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of his pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. that song nice. that's so much fun all right my next selection again from the same book is reaching back many 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 years I'm sure you've all heard this before but I wanted to read it tonight because it's just so heartwarming and and fun so the original date that this was printed was September 21st 1897 it is an editorial reprint from the New York Sun the editor's name is Francis P Church and I think you all know who the uh, editorial was written by. Here we go. We take pleasure in answering at once and thus prominently the communication below, expressing at the same time our great gratification that its faithful author is numbered among the friends of the sun. And it goes, Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there's no Santa Claus. Papa says if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Written by Virginia O'Hanlon, 115 West, West 95th Street, New York City. The editor replied with, Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generos generosity and devotion exist. And you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would the world be if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. Responded by Francis P. Church.
that song. That's so cute. It's, really it's a great song. Great. Do you have another one you'd like to oh, share with us tonight? Oh, yes. Let's do Frosty the Snowman, even though it's a uh, barren wasteland here in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We had 0 0.01 inches of snow on a Friday a couple of weeks ago, and it was gone as soon as the sun came out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pretend we're having a white Christmas, which we won't with a little bit of Frosty. Take it away, Colin. I love it. That's a great song. Zeus has been such a good boy tonight. He's been enjoying the music. He loves the stories. Uh -huh. He's just my little lap dog. I'm sh surprised he doesn't smell my cats and have a little issue, but he's he's pretty chill. He's a good a good little guy. I hope you enjoyed the stories and of course the music live by Colin Warren. What an amazing pianist. I I uh Love coming over here to listen to the music. Any any song I pick, he will whip open the piano bench, pull the book out, and say, oh, I have that, mm -hmm. and play it for me. So with that said, we appreciate that you joined us tonight. This was short and sweet, but Zeus is getting tired, and he wants to go upstairs and go night-night. Mm -hmm. So we would like to wish you the most Merry Christmas, and it's been quite a trying year. For all of us, uh, let's say a trying two years for all of us. I hope that we have better things to look forward to in 2022. So let's uh, let's think about New Year's. Do you have a song you want to yes, throw out for us? No New Year celebration would be complete without a rendition of Auld Lang Syne. Thank mm -hmm. you.